Uh, InfluxDB is a system which is often compared to Prometheus. There are similarities. I think we're both on the third version of a storage engine now. Yeah. Yeah. Or about to launch it or something. Uh, you know, uh, it turns out that uh, Influx started like a few months after Prometheus. We know Influx is the better system because it has 172 more stars on GitHub right now. <laughs> Without Paul is going to talk about integrating Influx and Prometheus. Thanks. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, this is my talk about InfluxDB and Prometheus. Um, I'll cover a little bit about what exists now. This is mostly thanks to the efforts of the Prometheus team, uh, Julius in particular. Uh, but I'm also going to close with where we see the future of things like moving. So. Just as an intro, in case you don't know, InfluxDB is an open source time series database. Uh, we say time series instead of just metrics. In my mind, metrics are a subset of time series. Metrics are samples at fixed intervals, whereas in my mind, a time series could be irregular time series data like trades in a stock market or individual requests to an API, not just summarizations. So a little bit about InfluxDB, it's open source, it's MIT licensed, it's written in Go. It has a query language that looks kind of like SQL. Uh, we, as Brian mentioned, we're on our third version of our storage engine. We rewrote the storage engine from scratch uh, starting in the fall of 2015. Uh, we call it a time series uh, merge tree. It's heavily inspired by LSM trees and LevelDB, but it's specific to our use case. Uh, and also, actually, we have an inverted index as well. Those bits are available for preview right now, and they're going in by default in the next release. So it's basically an on-disk inverted index for looking up time series and stuff. Uh, and then, obviously, we have, we're a company, so we have a commercial offering which offers high availability and scale-out clustering. So the data model looks like this. You have a measurement name, which is a string. You have tags. Uh, so the measurement name is kind of like a metric in Prometheus. You have tags, which are key value pairs, which are like Prometheus labels. Uh, unlike Prometheus, you then have fields, uh, which is just uh, key value pairs. You have the field identifier, and then the value, and then um, you have a nanosecond scale epic, which is, again, uh, different than Prometheus, which stores at the millisecond uh, precision. Uh, we support more than just float 64s. We have float 64, int 64, booleans, and string types, and we're adding uh, uint 64 in the next release. So a query looks like this. Basically, we're getting the 90th percentile from the CPU measurement for the last 12 hours from the Western region in 10 minute intervals for every single host. Um, I just want to give a quick intro of the things, and then we'll dig into how the two integrate together. So we also have some other projects, um, which you may or may not know about. Um, Capacitor, which is our, our project for processing time series data. So this could be doing basic ETL tasks, and it could also be doing monitoring and learning. It's open source, written in Go. Uh, we have a scripting language for it called TickScript. It looks kind of like a lightweight kind of scripting language. Uh, and it operates in both streaming and batch modes. Uh, and it can store data back into InfluxDB. It has user-defined functions, so you can actually pipe out to custom code that you wrote. Right now, we have support for Go and Python, but basically any programming language that can communicate over a socket and decode protobufs will work. Uh, and recently, we actually added support for, we pulled in Prometheus bits to add support for service discovery and pull style. Uh, so basically, it can now scrape Prometheus targets uh, using the Prometheus service discovery and scraping code um, and work with, with that. So Telegraph, we have a data collector. Again, open source, written in Go. It's an agent deployed across infrastructure. It has a bunch of different plugins. Not the focus of this talk. So this is a question I got a couple of times. We're a sponsor here. I had a couple of people come up and say, like, you, you seem to be a competitor with Prometheus. Why are you actually at PromCon? Uh, which is a legitimate question. 
Um, and I asked this myself multiple times, particularly when I was going over you know, this talk uh, in the hotel a couple of days ago. I was just like, wow, it feels kind of odd to be here. And then I thought, well, what is Prometheus, right? Uh, well, there's the Prometheus server, and on, in some sense, we're definitely a com like a competing project with the Prometheus server, but by that same rationale, so is Cortex, which we heard about earlier today, right? So then I thought, well, Prometheus is actually a lot more than just the server, the implementation. There's also the alert manager, which is a separate thing, which you could use with or without Prometheus, right? Uh, there's the exposition format, which I think is is one of the one of, I want to think of the core strengths of Prometheus as an overall project and ecosystem is this exposition format. It gives you a standard so that you can instrument your apps and expose something that people can use and look at. And I think it's actually a really uh, good thing. It makes it really easy for people to understand things. The client libraries is another spot where I think Prometheus did really good work. The, the supported ones go Java, Python, and Ruby. And even better, there is a document that describes if you're going to implement a client library, this is what it should look like. These are the things it should do. These are the things it must do. These are the things it should not do, which of course, of course leads to people in the community creating client libraries that kind of have a similar set of functionality and a look and feel. So, I think the client libraries are, again, like a strong piece of the Prometheus ecosystem. Then, of course, there's the query language, PromQL. There's the API. There's more to the API than just this. But for me, what I care about is the stuff that lets you discover the metadata around the data that you have inside Prometheus. And then, most importantly for us, for Influx, is the remote read and write API, which uh, my understanding is it's like it, it's there, but again, this is, I think it's entirely experimental functionality at this point, which isn't guaranteed to be stable. So there may be changes to it over time. But the point of all of this is that Prometheus is more than just the actual server that stores data and scrapes targets, right? It's all these other things. And we can certainly build an ecosystem of tooling around it, replacing some parts, keeping other parts, just like Weaveworks does, just like Cortex does, right? Uh, so let's look at what the Influx plus Prometheus picture looks like today. And like I said, most of this is due to not our efforts. We haven't uh, dove into that yet, but due to the Prometheus people being nice enough to actually write integration and tools to work with other projects. So a key thing that I think is important to note is that we're embracing pull and push. Previously, we were strictly focused on push. That was the thing that we were doing. Uh, and when we saw Prometheus come out, uh, I particularly in the beginning, I was like, ah, pull does not seem like the right thing. And then over the course of the last couple of years, I kind of came around to the idea of pull. I think there, there are some cases where pull makes a lot of sense and it works really, really well. And there are other cases where you want push. I think push is more important primarily for application developers people who are tracking, say, sensor data, where they're building apps on top of it. Uh, pull, I think, is very, very strong for decoupling your how you expose your metrics from your actual monitoring infrastructure, which seems to be in line with kind of the, one of the core ideals of Prometheus as a project, is this decoupling, separating things out so you don't have like these big points of failure. So as I mentioned, we added support for Prometheus scrape targets into Capacitor. Um, what that looks like is kind of like this. We have the service discovery stuff. We discover things. We scrape the targets. We have a tick script, which is user-defined, which can then modify that data and either store it into InfluxDB or modify that data and pipe it out to other things. Capacitor has the ability to pipe data to Kafka, to Influx, and a few other places. Um, as a result of this work, uh, so the two issues I li have linked at the bottom there, the first is just a repo that we have of tick scripts that will normalize metric data from some of the different exporters that exist. And the other one is actually a discussion that uh, one of the Prometheus developers opened up about potentially separating the service discovery bits from the actual core Prometheus project because they see that there are other projects that could get value out of actually using those bits. I know there was one other project, I can't remember the name of, that was using the Prometheus service discovery pieces. So 
Now there's the remote read write uh, API. So it looks like this. Basically, at the top, you have the Prometheus server, which is collecting data and storing it. Uh, and it can make requests to a remote gateway. Um, so there's basically in your Prometheus config, you can set this up like this. You basically just say the URL. It can be a service that you write yourself. Uh, and there's something for write and for read. The truth is it doesn't have to be their remote gateway. You can write the service yourself. And if you look at the remote gateway code, there's actually not that much there. So it, it would be pretty easy to write one. I think I talked to somebody earlier today, and it sounds like they wrote a remote gateway just on the right side of things to pipe all of their Prometheus data into Kafka. So I think that's interesting. Um, but for us, I'm going to be talking about the remote gateway, which is the code that exists in the Prometheus repo under documentation examples remote gateway. So it makes a call uh, to the remote gateway, which then makes a call to InfluxDB. So the mapping that it does looks like this. A Prometheus metric name maps to an influx measurement. The labels map to tags. And there's only one field. It, it's always one field. It's called value. And it's a float 64. So the read process looks like this. So when a query comes into Prometheus, uh, it will read the data. And in storage slash remote, it has adapters to pull in from the remote gateway. It's protobuf over HTTP. So there's like a request, uh, which then makes a request to InfluxDB. So basically, to have this setup up and running, you have this other piece of infrastructure that you have to run in addition to Prometheus and Influx. So the reads look like this. This is the, um, the profile for Prometheus that describes what a query looks like and what information you pass on. So you can see from this that the, the query that, gets that will get passed on to the remote reader, in our case, influx, but it could be anything else if you want to implement it, is there's a start timestamp, an end timestamp, and then there's the matchers, the set of matchers. Right? And you have a match type, and you have just the collection of matchers that you're, you're matching against. Right? You don't have metric in here because, again, under the covers, the, the metric one is always going to be underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. Uh, but there is actually also uh, like a, um, a metric match. So once we get to the remote gateway, we decode that. It gets converted into an InfluxDB query. Uh, the way it does that right now is this like string concatenation kind of thing. It's not, it's not ideal, but it's, it works as a good hack for now. Uh, and that makes an HTTP request to InfluxDB, which then encodes the data as JSON, comes back to the remote gateway, which then converts it to the format that Prometheus is expecting of the time series data. So that's today. Um, there's a lot of unnecessary overhead in that, right? The remote gateway is doing these layers of translation uh, that are unfortunate. It's making a request to influx, which is then marshalling the data as JSON, which is inefficient, which then gets parsed and then converted. So what we'd like to do is see if we can eliminate some of that unnecessary overhead. And for looking much further out, the question I have is, is it possible for us to push down some of the query processing? So right now, the way the remote read stuff works is it can request label matchers and a time range. But if you're doing any functions like sums or whatever, histograms, any of the other stuff, uh, or counts, any, any of those things, you're actually streaming all of the raw data over the network to Prometheus, which then processes it, processes it locally. Uh, what I'd like to see is if we can actually get to a stage where we can push down some of these primitives and have them executed locally so that the summary data gets sent up and the Prometheus server would act to basically just combine those summaries. So basically, like think of it like a map reduce that you run on the fly. So this is, this is the future stuff that, that we're thinking about. And so there's work that we've just recently started, um, and I wanted to you know, make it known to everybody here and talk about how we could potentially work with the Prometheus project to have what we want to accomplish together influence some of the work that we're doing. So the first thing to note is we're going to be changing our data model. We can represent our old data model using the new one. The new data model is basically just going to be tags, a value, and a time. This is very much like Prometheus, right? 
Here in the remote definition is the proto for basically series data. You have a sample, which is a value and a timestamp. You have the label pair, and a time series is basically just a collection of label pairs and then a series of samples, right? So we're moving to the same model. Um, and the way, obviously, for Prometheus, metric is basically just a label, underscore, underscore, name. Uh, for us, we'll have underscore metric for Prometheus compatibility, and for Influx1.x compatibility, we'll have underscore measurement. So we'll basically be able to represent the Prometheus model plus the Influx1.x model using this. Uh, but we will, for us, we'll continue to support these data types. Uh, we're not just going to be float 64 uh, because we have other use cases where people, people find that important for them. So we are working on a new query language. It's still very early days, but we're basically defining a new language that looks very functional in nature. Uh, we found that the SQL style language is kind of painful to work with. It doesn't, I don't feel like it really maps cleanly to working with time series data. When I think of working with time series data, I actually think of working with like data frames or matrices of data. Um, so this is basically what it looks like, at least one example of what it might look like. Uh, we have a select statement still, we specify a database, we specify a where clause, which is basically like label matchers. Uh, for us, we have and, or, equals, not equals, regex matches. Um, you get a range of time. We can partition that into windows, uh, and then we can compute uh, aggregates across each window, and then do things like interpolate the data to fill in missing values or any of that kind of stuff. So. One of the things as part of this effort is that we want to decouple the query language from the processing engine from the storage engine. And this is where I think it gets interesting in terms of having Prometheus and Influx work together. What that looks like is, what I'm imagining this looks like is something like this. And we actually have some prototype code already that we're going to be putting out uh, in September that shows a couple of basic Prometheus queries that work along with IFQL queries, which is what we're tentatively calling the new language. So the idea is you have the query language at the top, InfluxQL, IFQL, or PromQL, or TickScript. That gets parsed, and it gets parsed into a directed acyclic graph that describes what the query is. That gets passed over to the execution engine, which will then develop a plan to execute that graph, and then go across n number of storage nodes to do it. The DAG can be represented as JSON. Here's an example. Basically, we have operations. We have select, the range, uh, the sum, and then you have the edges that connect them. Uh, it's, always, it's not always necessarily strictly a list. It could be like a tree, an inverted tree, and that kind of stuff. So I think, so basically, the, da the DAG thing, we hand it to the engine, and then the engine figures out how to execute it. It asks the storage tier, each of the members of the storage tier, what kind of capabilities it exposes. So does it expose passing through the label matchers or the where predicate? Does it expose pushing down uh, computation like count or sum or you know, like t-digest or something like that? So basically what we're looking at is can we, can we do more in the remote read side of things? add more potential complexity to be able to get processing locally that just sends summary ticks, right? Do we have opportunities to improve storage slash remote? Uh, then the other thing we're looking at is bulk write. The way the write gateway works right now is very, very inefficient in terms of it just pulls, you know, sends all the stuff and then it writes it, it can batch it, that's fine. But for influx, um, the the Processing that data, like parsing all the line protocol data and then indexing it and all this other stuff is fairly inefficient. If we had some place where we were actually like able to pull bulk data out of Prometheus in the, say, the, the TSDB 2.0 format, we could probably come up with something that's far more efficient to translate that into the influx uh, storage format. So, but overall, like our the way we view like working with Prometheus is one, we want to support the scrape targets, we want to support the exposition format, uh, but we want to also support being a, an option for long-term storage and query of Prometheus data. Um, so that's all I have. Thanks.
questions. Questions. Hi, I've got a question about the query language because, as I understood it, Prometheus is planning to, at some point, include the type of the metric into its data model so that you can distinguish between like counters and gauges. Are you planning to do this right away also if you, if you design a new data model and query language? Uh, so, I mean, so we have talked about having type as part of it. In, in the spec for like the new data model and query language, I have underscore like type as a reserved like tag name so that we could later work with that in the query engine. Yeah. Okay, hello, guys. So my question is, anybody test uh, remote storage adapter performance on, let's, let's say, uh, scale testing or stress testing? Because in my case, I'm trying to push something like 4 million metrics, something like 70,000 uh, metrics per second, and InfluxDB is working, Prometheus is working, but remote storage adapter is somehow dying. I, I don't know root cause, but maybe somebody Anybody, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so we, haven't, we haven't tested that yet. Um, actually, that's one of the things I should have mentioned is we, we'd like to pull in the, to make it so that you don't need the, if it wasn't obvious from the talk, make it so that you don't need the remote storage adapter. You'd be able to edit your Prometheus config and actually just point it directly at Influx, and Influx would implement all that stuff inside so that it would have a specific endpoint for handling Prometheus write requests and read requests. So that's work that we'll get to later this year. Uh, I would guess in not in the next release, but the one after, so 1.5. From your talk, I saw that you are going to support PromQL, right? And uh, through some uh, model of GAG uh, stuff. So. Uh, why do you create new language and don't use PromQL right away? Uh, so that's because the our, we have a bunch of different use cases that are usually not Prometheus usually isn't concerned with, and we have to keep those users in mind with the new the new query language. So it's not it's not strictly a one to one mapping. Uh, if Laurie could get ready, please. So right now, InfluxDB has both labels and fields. I mean, text and fields, and text are indexed and fields are not. And you are going to migrate to text. Does it mean that fields are going away and every tag will be indexed by default? So you still have, in the new model, basically underscore field is reserved, and you can have, you can have that. Um, so basically, you'll be able to get the same functionality as having fields. Uh, it's just that the way it's represented is as you know underscore field. Then you have the field name, and then the values are all they're they're not indexed. They're just by range, by time range. Any other questions? Oh, thank you very much, Paul.